the rhyme of the ancient mariner rhyme of the ancient mariner earlier what we have studied is uh, two poems we have studied and those two are what we can say are sonnets one is shakespearean sonnet the other is a regular sonnet and the sonnet they have two parts in it one is uh, eight lines one the other is six lines one octet and sextet that is the structure of sonnet you have seen them both of them shakespearean one and ojmanidas these two are sonnets this is a ballad before i tell what is a ballad i shall say what is a sonnet then you will be knowing understanding the difference between these two sonnet it is having only 14 lines first eight introduce and last six they bring about the solution likewise octet and sextet 14 and here it is a ballad ballad is a what it is a poem used very simple words are used to bring about a great meaning also it talks about some ancient happenings very ancient or biblical stories they contain or they have a moral a story and a moral or we can see the god's presence in the poem that is ballad earlier to that we have studied the nightingale and the frog that is again a lyrical poem it is means to sing and to read to recite it is a very easy one and we get a, a kind of pleasure in doing that lyrical sonnet and now we are going to see what is a ballad it is a very long poem very long written by our st coleridge samuel taylor coleridge so you can see when you read the poem his language his style and his descriptive methods that we can read through this poem what is this poem anyway it is a poem of a sailor the sailor repents on certain wrong doing the sailor repents upon a wrong doing men are there to err is human we read it we know it and we practice it also and we do something wrong and we say very simply to err is human if i don't do that mistake i would not be in a man that way we just escape but whatever you do here you are to get the results here itself nothing will be accounted for in your account nothing is pending such kind of a philosophy the poem teaches us marriages are there human being even our shakespeare said the human being character can be split into seven stages right in the drama as you like it we have the the speech a great speech of jacques seven ages of the man we have it here one of the stages is marrying stages people were rushing towards the marriage to attend the marriage three people were going and one of them was caught and he was being told this story here the story what kind of a story does it have any merriment in it no a very long and what we can say very boring story it is being told to a person who was supposed to go to attend a marriage party why this again people are there they repent on their things what they have done they feel if i tell whatever i have done the wrong which i have done if i tell it at least a kind of a, what burden is reducing from my mind so the ancient mariner once upon a time he was a mariner and now he is not a mariner and he sits on a overturned boat and he calls everybody whosoever goes from there 
and he calls him and he tells about this incident which occurred in his life so that he may be losing some kind of burden from his mind so what does he say and what are his experiences what he wants to say how this marriage guest feels over there let us see all the feelings through the poem that is the poem here so what can you see in the picture first one does the man look happy give reason for your answer there is a picture here and there is a net and a man having a bird hung in his neck this again one kind of a, a what we can say a culture a custom which is still there in our hinduism suppose a milkman is there a milkman he tames cows also and he keeps buffaloes even by chance or by bad luck one of the cows died under his care because of his carelessness so the noose which is tied to the cow and to the peg the rope that rope the person the milkman should have in his neck and he should not talk to anybody he should not cook he should not earn and whatever he gets on begging only on that he has to live for certain days and by that it is said it is believed that his sins which occur due to the death of that cow will be vanished away why i told this is this kind of a kind of what we can say uh, a culture a custom you may call it as a superstition whatsoever it is still there prevailing in our hinduism means one should knowingly not become the reason for the death of a cow because cow is the very pious animal for us right so now this albatross the bird is albatross which is having in his this one this is being regarded as the good luck and good woman what is good woman if at all it comes if i see it when i am going out the day it goes very good the day the whole thing will be very good and i will be gaining something profitable day that one is a good woman and likewise is albatross is also a good woman but but the navigator the mariner what did he do is he killed that albatross and that burden he was having this is a symbolism for having that burden on his head or through his neck did he hang it no the burden is still there on him that is symbolism symbolically expression of what under what burden that navigator was ancient mariner was so whosoever goes on the road he calls and he tells and he feels that he is relieved of this pain to some extent whomsoever he repeats goes on repeating the same thing to everybody and this caller it was attracted by what is this what is this old man doing why he is telling everybody by that he got some kind of influence yes impressed by the old man's doing and so he has written it in his verses so let us read and here first question we have answered it is a thing and ans- reason also we have answered and next one is why does he have the wire bird hanging around his neck either it is a symbolism or if at all the man has that word should to feel the burden of his sin who has committed which has been committed by him now see the rhyme of the ancient mariner is one of the best known classical poems written in english containing some very beautiful and memorable lines you may find that it needs some work and attention from you to understand it yeah we are to understand it and so attention is very much needed needed and now 
before you are in a position to appreciate and respond to the beauty of the language that it contains. The rhyme of ancient mariner is a ballad. I already told you that is it is it tells a story. Ballad poetry usually includes archaic words, very old words and spellings. Right? Now let us see the poem, what it contains, how it has been told. And it is a very lengthy one. Let me read it once for you and then a simple explanation will be there. So, since it is a long poem, only the first two parts have been included here. It is a very long one, has a seven parts. Right? Only two have been included here for our reading. Your teacher will help you read the other five parts after the complete of this unit. Okay. Now, part one. It is an ancient mariner. And he stopped one of the three by the long grey beard and glittering eye. Now, wherefore stoppest thou me? Now, there were three people going. What for were they going? They were going to attend a marriage. They were the marriage guests. One of the three was stopped. Remaining went away. Why? They were not influenced by the look of the man. By the beard and by the eyes of the man. They were not at all influenced. So they both have gone and he remained there. And after getting, waiting over there, stopped over there, he asked, why did you stop me? See the thing. He stopped himself because the old man, something attracted from the old man. He stopped over there. He questions the old man, why did you stop me? Wherefore, now wherefore stoppest thou me? Thou is you. Why did you stop me? Why have you stopped me? That way he questioned. Their bridegroom's doors are open wide. And I am next of kin. The guests are met. The feast is ready. Is set. Mayst hear the merry din. Mayst hear the merry din. You see, as it is said, it has contained many archaic words and spellings. Beautifully arranged to bring about the rhyme even. Right? So here what is the thing? The bridegroom's door are opened wide. They are inviting me. Inviting everybody. I am the guest. I am not from a very distant relative. No, no. I am very close kin. Very nearly related to the bride. Okay. And so I am to go. Bridegroom's doors are open. And I am very near to him. A very near relation. And so I will have to go. And the guests are met. The feast is set. Guests are coming. They are entering in. And the feast is also ready. So at any cost, I'll have to go there. Okay? Mayst hear the merry din. Don't you hear the merry din? Din means a, a kind of, a, a, what we can say, alarm. Means many people talking at a time, shouting at a time, that is called as you are, uh, din, D-I-N, din. But it is not horrifying din, and it is not the fearful din, but it is a merry din, because occasion is a merry occasion. So, mayst hear, don't you hear? May I don't hear or don't you hear? You see here, here, here. There is a sound. Very pretty and very happy sound is coming. Shoutings are going on there. I will have to go there. He holds him with his skinny hand. The hand is skinny. Means only skin and bones are there. There is no muzzle at all. With that he caught who? The ancient manner. Whom? The guest. The guest was caught by the skinny hand of the ancient mariner. There was a ship. Kathi, he did not say why he stopped. Simply he said, Kat, Q U O T H, Kat means said. Quote word is there, quoting. Mahatma Gandhi quotes and Ravindar Tagore quotes, Vivekananda quotes, we write in the school, right? That quote word has come from Kat. So, he cut, he said, what did he say? There was an old ship. See here. The, there was an old ship. 
is that necessary yet to be told but he started like that hold off and hand me grey beard loon as soon as his hand dropped he now what nonsense you are talking i asked you why are you stopping me here i am to attend the marriage and you hold my hand how dare you are leave me leave my hand what is the wording here for the leave my hand you see here hold off hold off hold on hold on means catch hold off means leave hold off and hand me hand means catch and hand means leave and hand me leave me alone grey beard loon how he addressed him grey we know beard we know grey beard means the beard is completely become grey loon loon means nothing but a mad fellow lunatic fellow you lunatic fellow you mad fellow why did you catch me you stopped me i am asking why did you stop and you caught me also leave my hand that way the marriage guest has become a bit angry so as soon as his hand dropped means immediately immediately is as soon as right he leaves it quickly dropped his hand leaves his hand he holds him with his glittering eye there is no physical holding but there is some holding and hence the guest stood there without any movement not only standing he sat on a rock over there you see the power of eyes what did he see what did the guest see we don't know what did this fellow mariner show in his eyes that too we do not know only thing is he left the hand but held the guest by his eyes right he holds him with his glittering eye the wedding guest stood still and listens like a 3 years child you see he was wild earlier leave my hand he was wild now he was listening to the mariner in a child as if as if he is a child he is hearing where wild where child there he did not put the word wild but to bring about the meaning of earlier thing he put this child here and let us understand that the person became wild earlier now he himself presents as a child here see the beauty so the mariner hath his will now because he could able to catch him through his eye glistening eyes glittering eyes the mariner has the upper hand to talk to him yes i can talk to him and whatever i say he will hear he will sit here the eyes so to say are mesmerizing right the eyes are such has the power to mesmerize somebody he forgets everything and he sits there so the wedding guest sat on a stone he cannot choose but hear and thus speak on the ancient man the bright eyed mariner the bright eyed mariner does speak on speak means nothing but spoke earlier past tense to speak is speak now it is replaced by spoke so the mariner ancient mariner started speaking and the guest has no choice excepting sit on a stone and hear whatever he says see the power of the eyes and so lastly he said again the bright eyed mariner the ship was cheered the harbor cleared merrily did we drop below the kick below the hill below, below the light lighthouse top and now we set sail we are going merrily we enter into the sea everything was happy we went into the sea and what are the steps to say merrily the ship was cheered means sianara see you bye bye go this everybody cheered up for us for our safe journey and so the ship left the harbor right and the harbor cleared it cleared the harbor everybody waved at us we are clear 
the harbor. We went into the sea. Merrily did we drop below the kirk. We were dropped below the kirk. That is, the church is there above. The hill is there. On that, the church is there. And we have crossed that. Means our ship was appearing as if it is a small toy. Because it is on the mountain. And there is a church over there. Below that, we were passing as if we are very small miniatures in the ship. Because the church is high, very high. It has that kind of respect over there. Under that, we were going. And next, the lighthouse was also there. Under that also, we have sailed. Right? That way, he put everything, whichever is available on the seashore when the ship was leaving. The sun came up upon the left. The sun came up upon the left. Means is it left? Or the sun rises from the left? No. It rises from the east. And if the sun is rising from here means what? We are travelling to the right. When we are travelling to the right, then the sun, because it is the east here, the sun comes from here. Right? So, the direction is rightward direction. They are going towards right. The sun came up upon the left. Out of the sea came he, and he shone bright, and on the right went down into the sea. And he shone bright. All day long it was shining, and he sank into the right. That means into the west. We are going towards the one direction, that is the southward direction we were going. Higher and higher every day. Every day we are going higher and higher. Till over the mast at noon. The sun every day comes. Every day sings. Right? He goes every day higher and higher. Till it comes onto the mast. What is the mast? There is a big pole. And to that the sails are tied. That is called mast. Right? And there the sun appears. Higher and higher every day till over the mast at noon. The wedding guest here beat his breast for he had the loud bassoon. See here. So by the noon the sun comes to the head. That way the ancient mariner is talking about his incident, his story. Now what happened? There is a sound, blaring sound from the bassoon. What is this bassoon? It is a musical instrument in the band party. The band one, band baja. In that, there is a very big brass pipe you can see with a this big opening. That is bassoon. Right? It blared over there. Then the chief guest, he could not, sorry, the marriage guest, he could not but hold his hand and thump his chest. Why? He was not allowed to go. And this fellow is talking, talking, talking. Unnecessary things. What is that to me? If his ship is cheered, if it went inside the sea, ocean, if the sun comes from the left, why I should bother about it? Is it not? That way he is bet his breast for he had the loud bassoon. The bride hath paced into the hall, red as a rose is she, nodding their heads before her goes, the merry minstrels, minstrelsy. Now the bride has entered into the hall, hall of the marriage, the doors are open and the bride is walking. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSC syllabus.